This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.com. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start, we have a request. If you are genuinely enjoying what we're doing here on the show, then please leave us a review on iTunes or your podcast app. It really helps us grow the podcast and ensures that we bring you great marketing tips and advice each week. Now, today I'm joined by Libby Thomas, Creative Content Specialist at Lucid Chart. Libby, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very, very well. And uh, um, you are in Utah in the United States, aren't you? Yes, indeed. Very hot Utah. What's the weather doing over there at the moment? It is blistering. We've had 101 degrees Fahrenheit for the last four days, I think. Yeah, yeah, just for our global listeners, because you use Fahrenheit, don't you? If it was 101 centigrade, I think it would be a bit of a different story. I, think that, I don't think <laughs> I'd be, be talking to you, to be honest. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's enough for the weather report, which I always seem to do at the beginning of shows. Um, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and Lucid Software. Absolutely. So I'm the creative content specialist at Lucid Software. Uh, prior to this, I was doing social media marketing for several companies. And now I work with the marketing department and the creative team at Lucid to find kind of out of the box ways to market to potential customers um, here. So Lucid is a tech startup in Salt Lake City, Utah. We are dedicated to helping people work and think more visually. So we've got two products. We have Lucid Press, which is an online design tool, and we have Lucid Chart, which is for creating diagrams and collaborating with coworkers and other people on creating those. So that's Lucid Software. Now, today we're going to be talking about uh, making your marketing more visual, and I'm just really interested about this because it's not something we talk about that often when we're talking about marketing online. Um, now, Lucid's slogan is, is think visually, but what is visual thinking and why is it so important for marketers to sort of uh, hone and develop this skill? So thinking visually is being able to um, express your ideas and, and to process your ideas really using images rather than solely relying on text. So I think all of us have had the experience of um, we get an email and it's just a massive wall of text and it takes a long time to go through that to understand what your correspondent was trying to get across and sometimes there are miscommunications, there's a lot of back and forth. Whereas if you look at an infographic or you look at um, a flowchart mapping out a process, it becomes a lot clearer and a lot more quickly what that person is trying to get across. And so we believe that there's a lot of power in that visual thinking. Now, the reason that it's important for marketers to be able to do that is because the landscape of marketing is changing so drastically. The way that people consume their information has changed dramatically since, you know, the last few decades. I mean, if you go back to Victorian marketing, which is a long time ago, mm. um, you look at those, those playbills and the, the, the signs that they posted on, on walls, they were very, very text heavy. Sure, there were some illustrations, but it was all about why you should buy this tonic, why you should do this thing, but it was just a, tons and tons of text because that's how people were consuming information at the time. But now you see the rise of platforms like um, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. All of those are heavily, heavily visual. Or you even look at Facebook. It used to be that everyone's Facebook feed was just a lot of people posting sad song lyrics, or that was mine at least. Yeah. But now it's just people's Instagram photos that they have also p posted to Facebook. So it's tons of visuals. Um, my favorite example of the switch actually is online dating decades. So if you think about um, a few decades ago, or not even decades, but a few years ago, the way that you would find a partner online was by filling out a questionnaire about what you were like, what you were looking for, and then algorithms would match you up with these people and just see if there was a spark. But now we've got Tinder, we've got Bumble, we've got all sorts of other apps that are dedicated to helping you find somebody, and they are very visual-based. You see, you can swipe through, you know, three to five pictures, a little bit of a bio, a little bit of where they live, and that's about all. But frankly, it's pretty effective, and it's enough to to see if you would have that spark with somebody. And an analogy that I like that I think really applies to marketing as well um, is if you walked into a party and you were trying to meet somebody, you wouldn't walk up to your host or hostess and say, I'm looking for someone who is six foot two, has a beard, a mechanical engineer, and also likes going to the ballet. 
you wouldn't do that. You'd walk into the party, you would look around, you'd say, who looks like they're having a nightmare? Who's pretty cute? And then you'd go up and talk to that person. Mm. And and I, you know, I think that, that that applies very much to marketing. You you want your brand to be the cool person at the party. People aren't as logical as we like to think they are. They don't sit there and compare item by item. This is where this product beats that product. They just go with their gut a lot of the time. And so you want to make your marketing something that people resonate with quickly and that people connect with and make a great first impression. You want to be the cool kid at the party that they walk in and they say, yes, I want to be talking to that company. I want to be using that product because you've you've kind of pitched yourself so well. Now, it's really interesting. I mean, I was just, I'm trying to think of a, of a good way of phrasing this, but it's like, if we're thinking more sort of visual thinking in marketing and advertising, is that indicating some kind of change in the way that we think? Are we becoming, I don't know, less wordy and more picturey? I mean, is it a bit like sort of, I don't know, reverting to cave art when we've experienced Shakespeare? <laughs> um, I would argue no. Um, I think that visual thinking actually requires a lot more clarity of thought. You can't kind of couch your ideas with jargon. You can't, if you have a weak idea or some fuzzy thinking, you can't just throw more words on it and sound smart. It becomes very apparent very quickly if you don't know what you're talking about when you're trying to express your thoughts through pictures or through diagrams or through infographics. Um, so I would say, I, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the book Ender's Game, um, mm. but in it there is an alien race that's trying to take over the world and everyone is stunned because they move so in time and they are so quick, they respond so quickly to everything that the Hive Queen does. And towards the end of the book, we realize that they're not actually communicating through words, they're communicating instantaneously through pictures in their mind. And that's why they can respond so quickly to things. And so I wouldn't say that we've gone quite that far and we're not quite that sci-fi, but the idea that pictures can convey things much quicker than words can, I think that's something that we're starting to see a lot more of and to rely on in marketing. Now, visuals, as you say, a very, very powerful thing in, in, in marketing. I'm just wondering if you've got some specific tips that you could walk us through. For example, what are your thoughts on sort of the way we should be adding visuals to existing written content? Um, if you've been doing marketing for any length of time, you've got a lot of written content. You've probably got a blog that you've been adding to fairly regularly. One really easy way to start incorporating visuals into your marketing is to go back through your older blog posts and see where you could add some images, whether that's adding a good thumbnail and resharing it, whether that's adding kind of an infographic inside. It doesn't even have to be complicated. It could just be some sketches that you've done, just stick figure to explain what you're talking about. Um, but then go through, edit, make sure that the content is up to date and then reshare it. It's a great way to keep your content evergreen and make it something that's also going to be eye-catching this time. Now, what about the nature of the sort of visuals themselves? Should they, how, what should they be focusing on the product or, or the use of the product more? I think that depends a lot on your product. Um, I've, I've often felt, felt jealous of people who market for products that are inherently visual. I mean, if you're a florist and you're selling bouquets, Congratulations, because your Instagram is going to be beautiful no matter what you do. Mm. But for people who are selling flowchart diagramming software, for example, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So one thing that I like to do is kind of look at, look at what competitors are doing or look at what people in, in your same space are doing and get some ideas from them. So I've looked at um, Samsung, for example. A Samsung phone by itself is not very visually pleasing. It's just kind of a square hunk of metal that you keep in your pocket. Pick but um, if you go to their their Facebook page or any of their social media, it's not just picture after picture of that phone. It's pictures of people using the phone. It's pictures of people using the features of that phone. Yeah. So my favorite ad from the recent past was I was at a movie theater and there was this ad about a girl traveling to Peru and she was using her phone the entire way to help her translate, to help her find transportation, find a place to stay, to take pictures of the gorgeous vistas that she was seeing. And I couldn't remember what the phone was, but I absolutely remembered that whole ad experience. And so I looked and it was Samsung Galaxy S8. Um, but the reason that I remembered it was because they did such a good job of capturing this experience that I would love to have. Yeah. So make your marketing more about the experience and less about the product. Think about what you would like 
your customers to do with your product or what, what you would love them to know about your product and then share that. Now, I know you've got some thoughts on uh, thinking on sort of scales, haven't you, when it comes to visuals? Yeah, this is kind of one of the quirkier tips, I think, but it's something that I had a lot of success with. So um, I used to work for the BYU library. It's a university nearby. Mm. And when I took over, we had a lot of pictures, but they seemed to be somewhat the same. They, they were all of people reading. They were of events that were happening at the library. And there was just sort of a sameness about it that wasn't very fun when you were scrolling through our Instagram feed or our Facebook. So I realized that they were all the same scale. They were all of you know, a room with people in it. But we had an advantage of we have beautiful architecture. There's a glass atrium that's really cool that people love on this library. We are right in front of a massive, gorgeous mountain range. So that made for some really cool landscape photography. So mm. you know, when there's a sunrise or a sunset, the whole mountain range just lights up, and our library was right in front of it. And on the flip side, I mean we have incredible special collections. And so you get in there and you can see these manuscripts that are centuries old with doodles that monks have done on the side. And that's very micro scale, but people were fascinated by that as well. So yeah. when I kind of, when I felt like I was getting in a rut, I would say, okay, I've been posting a lot of micro lately. Let's go macro. Let's go outside. Let's take a picture of the building or, or talk about the history of the building. And if I felt like I'd been doing a little bit too much of that, it was, okay, let's take some pictures of book spines and show the cool designs or yeah. the funny titles. So kind of varying the scale of the marketing you do can be an interesting way to kind of shake things up. And I was also wondering about, I mean, we've been talking about visuals here, but is there a way to uh, kind of somehow bring the other senses into into sort of play with some of these visuals? That is a great question. And the answer is yes. <laughs> so you have to get a little bit kind of funky with them, but it's it's very possible. So with hearing, I mean, this is a great example. I'm I'm not blind to the irony that we're talking about visuals on a podcast that people will only hear. But as part of that, you're going to be creating a thumbnail. You're going to be creating an image that people will want to click on social media. So making sure that if you're sharing a, a podcast that you've made or maybe a playlist or a song or anything like that, that you've got a, an eye-catching visual that goes along with it. Smell and taste, I think, are rather difficult, but high-resolution photos and close-ups are really important. They help people feel like they're actually there. Um, I like the example of Tillamook. It's a dairy brand nearby. And um, they, well, I guess it's not nearby. Nearby meaning on my side of the pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they had this one ad for ice cream that was just a black background and a hand holding an ice cream cone. And the ice cream cone was just dripping down the person's hand. And it was talking about how they use real fresh ingredients. And But I could have eaten that ad straight because it was just so visceral and you know, you felt like you could reach out and touch it and eat that ice cream. So making sure that those, that if you're trying to convey smell and taste, that they are as sense-oriented and high resolution as possible. And then the last one is touch. Mm. So I would say um, showing close-ups on hands. If you are showing somebody passing something over a counter or passing something to each other. Um, or my favorite tip actually is it's, uh, mental simulation. So a professor of mine, Ryan Elder, has done research on this. Um, and he found that people um, imagine themselves interacting with the products. So if you were trying to sell a mug, for example, you would want to put the mug with the handle on the right-hand side to the viewer because predominantly people are right-handed, so they're yeah. more likely to imagine themselves reaching out and grabbing this. And um, there have been ads, they've done tests on ads, that when you show a fork going in or a spoon going into the food, on the right-hand side, people are more likely to purchase than if it's on the left or if it just doesn't show that shot at all. That's fascinating. Um, so always, always make sure that you're thinking about your product in a way that your viewers could reach out and interact with it. Now, what about uh, sort of social media, empowering your fans to share? How does that sort of fit in with the sort of visual side of marketing? There's a lot that has been said about crowdsourcing, and I, I think that everybody longs for that. Everybody wants to create the next trend that people jump in on and can't wait to share, and everyone wants to be the next ice bucket challenge. 
But the thing is, for the most part, for most brands, I think you have to find what people are already doing and then just incentivize them to do it more and to do it for you. Yeah. So a, a great example of that is Starbucks with their hashtag white cup contest. So a lot of baristas had noticed that um, people were taking the white, just plain cups and decorating them with Sharpies and making them really cool and very unique. So before Starbucks made a contest out of it, that's just something people were doing on their own. But then Starbucks incentivized it and said, hey, whoever can create the coolest cup will make a limited edition mug out of it. And people started posting with the hashtag white cup contest um, hashtag and just going crazy with these mugs. And so more people were coming into Starbucks, more people were sharing, generated a lot of cool buzz. And then one very talented artist got a mug made out of their work. So it was something that they were already doing, but then Starbucks incentivized it. So I would say, look at what your customers are already doing and then see if there's a way to kind of pull them into a big conversation about it. So Libby, what's a, what's a good way to sort of present sort of visuals to sort of you know, provide value to the, uh, to the observer or to the, uh, I'm trying to think of a good word, user, a customer, that's a good word. <laughs> Let's find all the words for them. So and, and you, whatever it is that you do, you are an expert in it. Um, and, and you probably have some very niche knowledge about certain things. So one great way to use visuals is to, to express what you know and to teach people. So whether that's through video tutorials, whether that's through infographics, um, that's something that will be very useful for people. And also from an SEO perspective, those are things that get searched a lot. So you are going to start showing up in search results. You'll get a lot of good traffic from that. So an example of how we've done that at Lucid is uh, we've got a lot of technical diagramming videos to show people how to do entity relationship diagrams. What, you know, what do these shapes mean? How do they interact with each other? And, and we've got a few uh, tutorials there that have a surprising number of views on them on YouTube because apparently a lot of people really care about that and want to learn more. Um, but on the flip side, we also do webinars. So we um, show people how to use the product. Uh, we kind of walk them through, here's how to use Lucidchart. You are a project manager. Here's how to use it if you're beginning. Here are some tips to make things faster. And we also pull in interesting speakers. So we've had people from, you know, we had somebody from Atlassian talking about diversity and how to create um, a more diverse and vibrant workforce. And so pulling in people that you find interesting uh, to kind of share information on you know any sort of topic and doing that in a tutorial form um, is a way that you can definitely kind of rope people in with visuals and your marketing. Yeah. But what about slightly more wacky or sort of uh, offbeat use of visuals? Maybe uh, examples of uh, I don't know documenting unusual use of your product or something like that. Have you got any stories there? We have got so many examples of that. So. We sell flowchart diagramming software. At first blush, that does not seem like the sexiest product, but it turns out there are so many ways to use flowcharts and to use diagrams that we have been able to use that so much in our marketing. Our first example, kind of our foray into creative marketing, was a few years ago we did the Songtacular Flowdown campaign. So we took famous songs that are very repetitive and we put them in a flowchart form. So if you think about the song, Hey Jude, yeah. that repeats itself quite a lot. And it turns out it's really funny when you diagram that out. <laughs> you can just go through and go and do that. We actually have a vinyl decal on the wall right behind my desk that's massive and it's just the Hey Jude flowchart. Um, the next summer, we started doing what we call the creative flowcharts. So we realized that you know engineers are not easily pleased. They're not somebody that you can kind of put on the marketing razzle-dazzle and get them all excited about things but they are enthusiasts. They absolutely love fandoms and, and certain TV shows, certain books, certain movies. They become very obsessive about them. And so we thought, how can we harness that? And how can we tie that in with diagramming? So we started making almost buggy, weed-esque quizzes um, with flowcharts. So some examples, which Game of Thrones house are you in? Um, which UFC fighter should you be? Which Overwatch character should you play? Um, and my personal favorite, which also went viral, so that's a little back pet, but um, <laughs> where do you belong in Middle Earth? So Lord of the Rings <laughs> made it to the front page of Reddit and it got 600,000 page views in about three days. And people just loved that because we had some cool art. We made them look really cool. Um, 
but people also started saying, wow, I had no idea that, you know, Lucidchart was doing something this funny or wow, now I'm going to try using Lucidchart. And our most recent success, which we're all kind of a little bit gobsmacked by, but it ended up going very well, was, have you ever heard of Doggo lingo? Are you familiar with the internet world of doggos? No, no, I'm not. Tell me about it. I, Neither were we, but one of our engineers kind of gave us a tip that made that the internet is obsessed with dogs, which we knew, but that they've kind of invented a language about dogs. So what's the difference between a doggo, a pupper, a woofer, a (laughs) subwoofer? (laughs) And uh, so my enterprising colleague, um, our video manager, made a kind of hacky video that was just diagramming out all of the doggo terms and what they meant, how they relate to each other. And it's really fast. It's really tongue in cheek. It's only 60 seconds. And at the very end, it just says diagram your doggos and anything else in lucid chart. That's (laughs) two seconds. But we posted that and it went viral, not just, Oh, this is doing very well for us, but we got over 20 million views in a week because people just started posting it everywhere. It got posted on nine gag and Unilad and, and all of these Facebook pages dedicated to viral videos. It just took off. And we made a second one that's also doing incredibly well. And we never would have pictured that that would be, that would be our golden ticket, but it absolutely wasn't. And you can see on our reviews now, it says, I downloaded this because of the doggo video, but it's actually pretty good software. <laughs> so that's how we know we're doing our job, right? Well, people but love animals as well, don't they, Libby? They do. Yeah. So I would say take a look at your product, whatever it is, and try and find unusual uses for it. Try and find ways that people are using it in a way you wouldn't expect or, or find a way that they could um, because people respond to novelty. People respond to things that make them take a second look. And it doesn't matter if those are just small experiments. I mean, the Creative Flowcharts campaign, we have had over 2.5 million page views, page views from it um, and put a lot of ad spend into them. But at first it just started out with, what would people think of a Star Wars diagram? And we posted it and found that people were really loving it. So we made more and more, but find ways that, you know, people might not expect for you to use your product or to demonstrate it and then see what people respond to and then kind of build out a campaign around the two dedicates that are successful. Well, Libby, thanks so much for coming on. We've talked about a lot today, haven't we? But if you had one top tip or sort of key takeaway for our audience today, what would it be? I would say take two minutes two dedicated minutes to think about your marketing as it currently stands and find one way that you can start adding visuals. It's very small, but just actually set aside the time to do one thing and to think about what that would be and then see how that affects your marketing. See if you start getting more page views, see if you start getting more response from people. Um, Just take a small step in that direction. So Libby, how can our listeners find out more about you and uh, more about Lucid Software? If you'd like to find out more about Lucid and what we do, you can Google us. Lucid Chart is for diagramming, for flowcharts, kind of mapping out any sort of process, helping organize yourself um, and to collaborate with other people on that. Lucid Press, I think, would be really relevant to a lot of people listening to this, especially in making your marketing tool. Um, So that is our online design tool. So feel free to go in, uh, get a free trial. You can do that for both products. Just start clicking around. It's drag and drop design. So think about maybe a header that you want to make or an infographic and just kind of play around in there and see what you can create. So that's Lucid Press. Very cool tool. Well, thank you very much indeed, Libby. And thanks for listening. Listeners, show notes are in the usual place, sitevisibility.com slash podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a review, like I mentioned at the beginning. Um, we are always open to questions and suggestions. So the email is podcast at sitevisibility.com. You can tweet us at Site Visibility. If you want to connect with me personally, I'm Dr. Pod, D-O-C-T-O-R-P-O-D, on Twitter and LinkedIn. If you can, just mention the podcast, then I know sort of who you are. Um, if you want to continue the conversation, remember we have the Site Visibility Group on LinkedIn, and I think that's everything. So that's all from me, Andy, and it's all from Libby. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Internet Marketing. <laughs>